So these are the three main programs involved in putting this workshop together. And this workshop is part of a series. Um, the work on this began in June of this year and will continue until June of 2019. So the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative, the National Academy's Gulf Research Program, and the Sea Grant Hillsville Science Outreach Program are collaborating for a year. And I'm not going to go too in depth about um, each of them, but I will give you a little bit of an overview. The Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative, also known as GOMRI, began in 2010 in the immediate aftermath of the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. And um, the responsible party uh, did, are invested in a 10-year research program, so obviously we're, we're coming on the, the end of that now in 2020. Um, GOMRI will close its doors. But in um, the, the past eight years, Gomery has been successful in producing a whole lot of new science. And so their focus is on funding research that in general um, looks at understanding oil spill impacts to both the environment and human health. And we've got some other uh, five focus areas listed up there. And so if you want, you can visit their website and learn more about their, their work, the researchers themselves, the research groups. There's hundreds of different um, scientists and their students working together in different resource consortia. All of it's on their website, and um, it is the reason the Sea Grant Oil Spill Science Outreach Program exists today. Because in 2014, with all of this new knowledge and science about oil spills impacts, um, it was realized that we need to get that information out to our audiences that can use it. And the folks in this room are considered those audiences. So uh, Gomri offered funding support to the four Gulf of Mexico Sea Grant college programs. So Texas Sea Grant, Louisiana Sea Grant, Mississippi, Alabama Sea Grant, and Florida Sea Grant. And I'm with Texas Sea Grant. I'm based at Corpus Christi, Texas A&M University. Uh, we have Missy Partaika here. She's with, wait, Missy. <laughs> She's with Mississippi, Alabama. Um, so it's Tara Skelton with Mississippi, Alabama, and we have Emily Mung Douglas back there. She's with Louisiana. So if you haven't met Emily yet, she's your, your local contact for my program. And we also have Monica Wilson. She's not here this week, but she's in Florida, Sea Grant. And Steve St. Pierre, he's our team's coordinator. He's also with Mississippi, Alabama, and he is currently stuck in New Orleans traffic, but is on his way. So. Our job as a six-member team is to, like I said, share the science with our stakeholders and our audiences. And um, initially, we spent a lot of time listening. So visiting with our audiences, getting a, a feeling for what they're looking for, what questions they have about oil spills, about impacts to them. Um, and then, you know, after gathering that input, we turn to our peer-reviewed science. And so those journal articles that sit and live in the periodical section of your library, you remember that? Articles. Um, that's what we rely on for our science and for our information. We go to those journal articles um, with our audience's questions and needs in mind, and we pull the key findings and key results um, by topic, and we put them together in uh, a format that is understandable to everyone. You don't have to have a science degree to understand. So you might have noticed on our racks coming in here today, um, a whole lot of publications. Those we write for you. So please take them home with you. We're tired of looking at them sitting on our shelves. That we make them for you. You can also visit our website and download them for free. But if you want more of them, talk to Tara. Um, you can order them from her and we will mail them to you free of charge. So that's one way we get our science out. Another way is doing um, events just like this. We host seminars and workshops where we invite experts on a variety of topics into the room to share their science and information with our audiences. Um, and those are really valuable experiences because it's not only a one-way exchange of information. It's not just the scientists telling you the remarkable work that they're doing, but it's an opportunity for us to engage in discussion, ask more questions. And my team also uses these opportunities to um, get more updated on what your, your, or you and your needs are pertaining to oil spills. Also, we're working on other outreach products, um, videos, other visuals, and infographics, and all of that, again, can be found on our website. You can also sign up on our listserv via our website if you're interested in getting a month, monthly update to see what our, our next event or our publication is all about. So the third program involved in our workshop today is the National Academy's Gulf Research Program. 
The Gulf Research Program began in 2013, also as a result of Deepwater Horizon. And in general, um, the GRP, the Gulf Research Program, funds grants, fellowships, and other activities um, in order to catalyze advances in science practice and capacity to generate long-term benefits in the Gulf of Mexico. So I didn't memorize that. I had to read it for you, sorry. But the Gulf Research Program um, last summer hosted a workshop similar to this, but in Washington, D.C., where they invited a whole lot of public health researchers into the room, along with emergency response personnel, oil and gas industry, fishing audiences, a lot of the leaders in the nation to discuss some public health issues related to spills. And that all that is actually available through the Gulf Research Program website. You can download a report about that if you want to read about it. But one of the um, key points in, the, in those discussions at that workshop was that we need to get a better feel at the local and regional level what your priorities are. What are the priorities for the Western Gulf of Mexico? Because they're very different from the priorities of the Eastern Gulf of Mexico, as opposed to all the other regions in the nation. So, Sea Grant was mentioned as a wonderful partner in working with communities. We do have a 50 plus record of doing that. So, 50 plus years record of doing that. So, um, we are now collaborating with them, as I said, for a year. Um, we're having five workshops. Lucky us, we're the first, so no pressure. Um, and of course, we share the theme. We are setting priorities regionally for health, social, and economic disruption from spills. Um, we are working with our sister Sea Grant programs in each of these regions. And we actually have in attendance today some of our, our partners from those regions. We have um, Mariga here from University of Southern California Sea Grant. She's going to be working on the, the West Coast workshop version of this. And we have David Mullen. He's here from Alaska Sea Grant. He'll be leading that workshop up in, in Anchorage. And we're very thankful for both of them traveling so far to be here, especially since we um, have someone from an earthquake-ridden <coughs> city right now. Very grateful for you guys being here. Um, so these are just sort of tentative dates uh, of when those other workshops will occur. So those specific workshop outcomes I mentioned earlier, this is what we're here to do today. And um, you'll see this slide again later, and you'll also see it posted around the room when we break out into our discussion groups. But we want, before we leave here today and tomorrow, we're going to be talking a lot about these specific items. We are hoping to suggest protocols, suggest to include an existing response and regulatory frameworks. And don't worry if you're not sure what those frameworks are. We have a lot of people in the room that do know what those frameworks are. And actually one of our, our first speakers this morning is going to go over some of that information for you. Uh, we're also going to be identifying and listing some of your own pilot project ideas. If you don't have any ideas, well then we'll talk through it and make sure we have some on paper before the end of the workshop. Um, we're also going to be identifying research and outreach priorities for this region um, and identifying resources that address some of the issues that we'll be talking about locally and regionally. And of course, all the while we'll be fostering new partnerships and relationships and new connections. And we're doing this because all said and done, uh, we will have five workshop reports. I'm responsible for, for writing a, the report after this. I'll be taking all the wonderful information that you guys will be sharing this week and putting that into a report. And the other regions will be doing the same. So we'll take all that information, put it all into one final fun report, um, and hand it over to National Academy's Gulf Research Program so that they understand what the national, regional, and local priorities are in order for them to fund meaningful projects down the road. They want to see their money going towards meaningful projects that could have impact locally and regionally. And it's not just the Gulf Research Program that will have access to that information. It will be made publicly available. All of those workshop reports and the final report will be made available to you. You're free to share that with your contacts, your friends, your family. Um, we want to make sure it's getting out there so that um, everyone's aware of the opportunities should they occur down the road. And we will be measuring this over time. Hopefully you picked up the evaluation form on your way in off the table. If you didn't, don't worry, I will track you down and make sure you fill out an evaluation form. That is just step one in our evaluation process. That will let us know how we did today and tomorrow with this workshop. But we will be following up with you if, if we have your email addresses, and I have most of them, 
we'll be following up with you later on um, in the year to see if perhaps you have formed any new partnerships as a result of this effort, or if there's new funded projects, or if there's new plans in place because of the discussions we have here today and tomorrow. We want to make sure that what we're doing has an effect and an impact for you all. So, as your workshop mom, of course I have to set the tone for today and tomorrow, and I'm sure I don't have to really say any of this, but um, we're interested in sharing and exchanging information. Um, we want uh, respect, of course, to drive those conversations. We want everyone to listen with um, open ears and a positive attitude, and uh, we want you to share our ideas. If you notice someone's being shy, that's fine. Let's find ways to work together to make sure that everyone has um, an opportunity to exchange information. And so we will be having our guest speakers, and that is a time for us to listen. Um, but we also will have a lot of opportunity to ask our guest speakers questions during the panel session, as well as during our breakout um, discussion groups. 